everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for coming to my talk. I greatly appreciate it. You could have done so many other things with your time, like what's a terrible movie. Uh, and yeah, I actually did not hear my own intro because my internet had a moment. <laughs> so I'm going to be talking about 3D in the web. It is, oh, there was a login item that was added to my computer. That's very important and you all should know that. Um, and basically going about like how hard can it be? So I think there's a, a great misunderstanding when it comes to 3D in the web that it's incredibly hard and it's actually like not that hard. So like everything in programming is hard and cursed, but it is not harder than usual. So who am I? Why do you care? I don't know why you care, but I can tell you who I am. So my name is Sarah. I am a developer relations engineer at Rama. Before that, I was a full stack engineer. I am originally from Portugal. I just moved to London. I love terrible movies, football, and video games, mostly retro video games. My parents didn't like video games when I grew up, so this is who I am right now. I play all of, all of the old video games. And during COVID, as we all got older and wiser and sad, uh, a bunch of us got like hobbies, right? Some people got into useful things. I started getting real deep in a blender. So this is something that I'm, uh, this is something that I made in blender. And th that's why, that's what I learned during COVID. I also lost a lot of faith in humanity, but uh, yeah, that's the two things I learned during COVID. Okay. So what is blender? So blender is an open source and free, obviously uh, 3d software. So the main reason it has an asterisk on it is because it can also do two things. So, uh, other things like you can also do 2d, for example, it can do video editing, but like for 2d, yes, there's some really cool stuff in 2d. I would not recommend doing video editing in blender unless you have really big self-esteem problems. Um, if you don't, then it's a 3d software and you will love it. Not just because it's free. It's actually really good software that's getting used by a lot of big companies right now, even to make video games and stuff like that. So it's a great time to jump in into it. Like it's, it just got version 4.0. And if you want to do it, I recommend you Googling the donut tutorial in Bl for Blender. Great tutorial. It's going to take you like 10 hours to make a donut. But it's going to be the best goddamn donut you've ever seen in your life. Okay. So let's go. So the first thing that I'm going to do is open up Blender here. Actually, no, the first thing I'm going to do is show you what we have and what we're going to make. So right now I have this page, which has all of the PS1 games from the library. I think American library. I'm not American, but it's just easier. Uh, so all of the PS1 games, like a bunch of their info, like what aren't they? Why is the first one Lulu and Stitch? Like basically, right? So if I switch, you can see that it changes the cover stuff like that and that's pretty cool like if you if you want to search for tony hawk there we go you can see tony hawk's pro skater for example so that's cool but wouldn't it be cooler and just picture this if we had a ps1 case here right okay so in order to do that the first thing that i'm going to show you is some basic uh basic on quotes blender which means that i already have a model and we're just going to be exporting it Right, we're just going to be exporting it to the web. So I'm going to open up Blender on my computer. And I know this is going to be a question because I've had this question a bunch of times. Can you use Blender on a Mac? Yes. Asterix. So Blender takes a lot of advantage of GPU. Uh, and Macs have terrible GPUs. Most of them are embedded. I think all of them are embedded. So like you can. Do not expect great performance just because you have like an M1 or something. Um, so yeah, that's the main issue that, that you, you may encounter. Okay, cool. So Crash Bandicoot, great game, super hard. So this is my little case. And the main thing that you should know about in the stock thing here that has like 10,000 different buttons is the shading options. So the first one is just the lines, which are basically when two vertices connect, they make a line. So and you can see it and it's like see-through and everything. So if you have something in the back, then you can see it. So that's cool. This is unshaded, which just makes it really sad. Then we have a shaded version and we have the render view. So this is basically the main difference is that this is, this can run something called cycles and cycles is photorealistic. It does a bunch of things that you don't want your computer to do. You don't want a MacBook to do. And Cycles is really not what we tend to use on the web. 
it's really also not what is, for example, in most video games, unless the video game is made by the latest version of Unreal, which is very, very rare. Most video games use something similar to this. And this in Blender is called EV, and EV just fakes light. So the most expensive thing to do in any sort of 3D render is lights and shadows. So that's why a lot of old video games had really terrible lighting. Everything was just flat. That was not a stylistic choice. <laughs> that was because the hardware would burn. You don't want hardware to burn, right? So yeah, this is my thing. And we have some textures here, which I basically assign the color, you know, to the base color. And that is pretty much it, right? It looks cool, but we don't want to see it in here. So let's export it. Okay, cool. So I'm going to click on this collection, which has everything. And I can do select objects. And this will select everything in the collection. Think of a collection like a div, a group in SVGs, anything like that. So after that, we can go to File, Export. And now you will see 10,000 different things. Ignore literally everything except GLTF 2.0. GLTF is the version for the internet. Like it is the pinnacle of internet 3D stuff. Uh, so in my folder, I'm going to go into the public one. I have one in case it doesn't work, right? Yes, I thought about this. So I'm going to call it case.glb. Um, so you can either save it as a binary or you can save it separately. I prefer to save it as a binary just because like one file is easier than two files. And some other things that you may want to do, you probably want to do is for example, turn on compression uh, and include selected objects. This is very important. In our case, we don't have anything in the background. But for example, if I wanted to take a shot of this, I would have like, you know, like a plane or something. You don't want that plane. <laughs> it's very important. And when you go on mesh, also click apply modifiers. So modifiers, you can think of it as effects, like you can add an array effect and then you have like 10,000 cases. Okay, after that, just export GLTF 2.0. It should be done. There are no loading spinners in Blender. It just shows you like a square. I love them it's so hard. OK, so what is the next step? Next step is that I have in the app.js, I load a game. So let me delete the stuff. And right now, I just load an image, but I want to actually load this scene. Cool. So first thing that we need is the actual model. So if I do this, right? And now it renders any, nothing. And if I do this, now it will just render a canvas. So the canvas being this color is just CSS. Do not worry about that. OK, so we want to first put the model in here. right? So if I go in the game, this is the only thing that I need to do. And then in the model is where all of the stuff goes. right? So let me open up the scene as well. Scene has just a case. And there we go. Yeah, that's about it. right? So we have the game that renders the scene and the scene renders this case, right? Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I have no idea. I hope someone, just one person in the audience going like, yes. And I'm like, that's great. Okay, so let's head out to this website, gltf.promodoras.rs. And in here, I can just drag and drop a GLTF file. So if I come over here and I go to the public, reveal and finder, open this baby up and get my case.glb. I, I, made, I made bad, I made bad dragging. Case.glb. I think there's a problem with the track. And I can't blame anyone else but myself. And that's bad because I made this website. So public case.glb open. And now it's loading. And it should, yes. So as you can see, we now have a case. Thank you for coming to my talk. My TED talk. Crap. Okay. This is the model, right? And this is what we need in order to put the model in our website. So as you can see, it's just a React component, which is incredible. So I'm going to copy this up, come over here to my website again. And in the case, basically what I'm going to do is paste this thing up. And I'm going to export function case instead. And now I get an error because use GLTF. Wait, uh, uh, what is the error? Use GLTF has already been declared. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you know, no, there's a problem with the website. OK, let's go. OK, cool. So in case you can't tell, that's the case. Isn't that beautiful? It is, right? OK, so very important thing about 3D. By default, if something doesn't really have any sort of light, then it doesn't have, like, nothing shows, right? And that's not great. So one way that is 
way easier to fix this is if we go over to the scene, I can use something called a stage. So if I import stage from React 3 Dre and I copy this over to close it. Oh, I'm sorry if my keyboard is very loud. I am one of those people. Okay, so if I see that, clearly way better. Weird thing with the PlayStation logo, but we're gonna we're gonna try and ignore that. <laughs> so another thing that I want to do is change the environment. So I want to go environment and you can see that we have a bunch of them. So by changing it, you change all the light around it, which is quite cool. So the one that I thought looked the best was forest. And that looks pretty cool. I don't know what's up with this, but I like it. <laughs> I actually really like it. Okay, and we have some shadows. Okay, that looks cool, but I want to implement our own shadows. So I'm going to say shadows, and I'm going to say false. And now let's implement some shadows. So these are going to be very very simple shadows and we can just add contact shadows in it close it and now we have absolutely nothing because we need to position them so i'm going to position at zero 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 which is the default but that's just for me to get an idea so now if i do something like minus one i should have shadows but i don't isn't that great okay cool uh and let me pass an opacity of one and one thing that we can also do that I think is really fun and is going to help me debug what the hell is happening is that I can add something called orbit controls. And if I add orbit controls, I, I don't need to reload the page. I can see where the shadow is and I can move it. Will you look at that? Ain't that beautiful? So that's the problem. We see the problem. So zero. So it should be like minus 0.3. That did not do anything, did it? So if I do minus one, it goes there. If I do one, it disappears. If I do 0.7 minus 0.7, that's good. Okay, cool. Okay, but we can't really see the shadow, so let's scale everything. Like, let's adjust the camera of this. So you can see if I can just type adjust camera, I can do something like 1.3, and that's smaller, and now you can see it. Okay, cool. That looks cool. But it would be even cooler if we you know, put the actual image that we want into it. So right now I already get the cover from here. So I have case equals cover. So if I come to my model, uh, I can console.log case.cover. So props.cover, sorry. So if I console.log props and I open up my inspector, I don't know why that was a weird British accent. I'm sorry, I haven't even been here for that long. Uh, I get an object with a cover that has a URL. That makes sense. That sounds cool. So we should just use that cover instead of like, you know, just use Crash Bandicoot everywhere. That's kind of weird. Not every game is Crash Bandicoot. Okay. So for that, there's a really cool thing called use texture. So if I just say, so const texture, no, not textarian, equals use texture. And in here, I will just pass props that cover. So it's actually really cool that it can understand that something is remote. Can it understand that something is remote? It can, that was a weird error. Okay, cool. So you can understand that something is remote and actually fetch it, but how do we actually use this? So right now we have the cover image here. So the materials that cover, so we can create a new material. Let me just say const uh, cover material. And to do this, we have to actually use pure 3JS. So not React 3 Fiverr, but actual 3JS. So we can say new. And we can say mesh uh, physical material is the most realistic, but also like, you know, not incredibly draining on your computer one. And if I just say color, if I can, oh my God. <laughs> wow. Oh my God, seriously. I hope someone is laughing. Uh, right. Okay, cool. So can I use this instead? Let's try it out. And I put this here and now we have red. Does it look great? It looks terrible. So. How do we actually pass a texture into it? So a texture in uh, 3D space, usually in 3, 3JS at least, is called a map because it's a map of all the colors and stuff like that. So we can just say map equals texture. And it should work, right? And it does. I mean, it looks cursed. Let me remove the red. That's That was a terrible idea. Um, yeah, cool. Let me remove the red here. I just wanted to see if there was any... Any complaints about my talk yet? Okay, cool. And now if I change it to 
Oh, I see. The above error could not load. Why? My internet is not having a great day. Uh, from origin, local host has been. Yeah, so I may have uh, made a small problem for myself here with Cloudflare, which is fair, still painful. So we could just look at this one <laughs> because for some reason, Cloudflare is not. So we're just going to look at this one. And I have a version on the internet on my GitHub that you can use for all of them. So like, I don't know why I didn't just add like allow all. So it's probably a different port and I apologize, but this one, it works great. So we have Lulu and Stitch. That's cool. Wouldn't it be cooler if we could like animate it somehow, like at least, you know, a little spinny thing. So I don't have to do this. Like I can still leave this, but it would be great if we could do a little spinny. So how do we do that? So in, in React 3 Fiverr and 3JS in general, things run at a certain FPS, right? Uh, by default, I think I can actually show you the FPS. If I go on the scene, there is an FPS or not. Uh, is it like info or something? Mm -mm. You know what? I have the internet, Trey FPS. So there is something called FPS. FPS something. Nope. Performance monitor. That's the name. So we can put on a little performance monitoring. And this should, in theory, show me the FPSs that I have, which is still not showing me. So I'm going to go back here and look for FPS again. Nope. 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 I hope everyone is having fun in this talk because I'm having a lot of fun with this. Okay, I have no idea what it is, but you can guess that it's either 30 or 60, right? Like it's never going to really go above that. So we basically what we want to do is that we want it to every frame just rotate a little bit more, right? And how do we even rotate things? So if I go on this group, let me reload the page so that it just, you know, goes back to the same position and I put this over to the side. I can do a rotation here. Rotation. And by default, everything is at zero, right? Oh, I need to pass three. That is not a zero. That's a zero. Okay, so by default, unless specified otherwise, like we have here, all of the rotations are zero. So one thing is very important to understand is that rotation does not work in degrees. It works in radians. So if I do the X rotation, for example, so also X is this, Y is this, and Z is the one that hits you in the face. So if I do math.py, you can see that it just rotates backwards. So 360 degrees is math.py, which is, you know, it takes a while to understand, but it's fine. It's fine. I promise. <laughs> okay, cool. So this is rotation. We can see how it kind of works. So we, what if we want to animate it? So first point, I don't know why I'm saying so, so much. We need a ref. So we, and I said so again, we need to basically uh, connect to this group. So we need to have a way to call upon this group and say like, okay, you need to move. So I'm going to say const group equals use ref. And it's just going to be equal to nothing. And then when I go here, I want to say ref. And I want to say uh, ref equals group, right? That makes sense. So now if I come here and I say group dot current dot rotation equals, I actually don't know if I could do this, dot rotation dot x equals math dot pi divided by two. It just breaks on me, which is fair. I'm going to put it in a use effect. That's fair. That's fair, Ria. You never know. Use effect. There we go. And now we do this. Optional chaining assign is not a thing, really. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, it did the thing, but it didn't animate it. So if we want to actually animate it, we can use something called use frame. And use frame comes from React 3 Fiverr and runs every frame. So let's say 30 times a second. Uh, so use frame has the same API as like use effect or something, except that it doesn't get anything in here, no dependencies, just runs every frame. So if I if I move this up here, 
right? I can say that group that rotation dot x equals group that rotation dot x plus one. So if I copy and paste plus one, isn't that incredible? <laughs> we have done it, y'all. So if I move this to y, which would actually make a lot more sense, we it's flipping the correct way. So you can either like, you know, play with this and just do like this, and then it's too small. There we go. So you can do something like this, but a good way to, to, to tackle this is to use the state. So use frame always receives the state of the current operation, the current application. And what you can do is say that, okay, the rotation is equal to state.clock, which is an internal clock that it has that get elapsed time. So if I do this, you can, if I reload the page, because now it was backwards, you can see that it actually looks way better, right? So get elapsed time basically is a second fast since the clock started. So you can make it faster or slower. I actually want to make it a bit slower. And now we have really cute, a little animation. So actually, let me assign the camera to like 1.4, uh, 1.2, 1.4, 72 reload, I guess, to see the camera changes. Yeah. Okay. So that looks cool, but it's not really like, okay, we're showing a, a PS1 cover. This isn't really ps one e if that makes sense. So I want to add some stuff that makes it more ps one -y. So there's also something that you can install called React 3 Post-Processing. And this allows you to add effects like uh, Pixelate, which is what we're going to use. And so you started by creating a little uh, wrapper around it. So you get the effects uh, composer. You get it from React 3 Post-Processing. Cool. And then in here, you can put any effect. So I'm going to use the Pixelation effect. And if I do this, it is now pixelated. There's also other types of effects, like I can use the vignette, for example, vignette. And I know there's like a couple of things to it. Uh -huh. uh, darkness is one. You have like some sort of like a small vignette around it. Like it's not really visible, but the pixelation, that one is very visible. There's also like depth of field and stuff like that. So you can add example that the field and that's not really going to do a lot in here but if i remove the pixelation it adds some like it's also i think blur gaussian blur gaussian blur no there's there's a blur one as well but all we care about right now is pixelation and we can also change the granularity so if i change the granularity of this to one it is bare verily barely pixelated i want something like i don't know four yeah that that looks like a PS, a PlayStation 1 game. <laughs> okay. But still, I think this is too smooth. Like, it's most likely running at 60 FPS per hour, per minute, per hour would be perfect, actually. That's what I want. And I created a little element that's just an FPS limit. So if I do this, so let me do this. And I'm just going to import that FPS, FPS limit. Uh, what did I call it? Did I just, like, export it? Export function, FPS limiter. Okay. And now if I do this, it does absolutely nothing. But if I pass a, not a limit, uh, an FPS to it. So if I pass five, now that's a PS1 game. <laughs> okay. So let's pass like, I don't know, like 20, which is a more average thing for a PS1 game. You can also make it stutter if you want. Just add an animation to the thing. Um, yeah. I mean... I'm going to also do something with the contact shadows that I'm going to make it way smaller. So like 0 0.3, that's too small, 0 0.5, right? And with these two files and some help from GLTF uh, React 3 Fiber, we actually got a fully working, three, I mean, not fully working because I screwed up Cloudflare, but a working 3D app, which like we can show off to people and we can even do this which is great. So if you don't want, for example, people to do this, there's also a, a bunch of options <clears throat> in the uh, orbit controls. Like there is a, uh, what is the option? I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. Why I keep being like, no, I will, we can do this. Uh, uh, there is something that you can use to basically be like, okay, this is the max angle that you can do. So I'm just gonna use max zoom. Max zoom two, and now if I try to zoom in, you can't really zoom in after this, right? Like, 
it's there's a bunch of little stuff if you don't want people to do this or if you just want them to rotate like this but yeah this is mostly what i wanted to show you that it's not as scary as one thinks to do 3d in the web um it's it's fine right like there is a lot of like you know hiccups and little things that you will find along the way but if there is a lot of really helpful community of react 3 fiber people and they can get you really up to speed on this so yeah i hope you enjoyed this talk i don't really have anything else to say except thank you so much for coming and if you want to find the code for this and check out the demo it's on my name which has two eyes that's very important confuses everyone including me and 3d hyphen react hyphen 2024 and yeah enjoy the rest of the conference thank you so we much. have questions we have questions Please don't go away yet. <laughs> like two so let's go hit me all right so uh, someone was also planning to build a 3D uh, portfolio, but instead of using React, they were planning on using Angular instead. Do you have any tips uh, and advice for them? So there is a project as well coming uh, called like Angular 3, which I think tries to do the same kind of thing as React 3 Fiverr. So they're basically custom renderers and you can definitely try Angular 3. There's also one for Vue. And I think that like these are the best options because it's way cleaner, right? Like it's much cleaner to use components that you're used to than to like use just 3JS. The thing about 3JS is that it's, I see it as more of a base layer mm -hmm. because like basically like, I don't know, like remember coding in jQuery and like you had to do like 10 lines to do one simple thing. Like we're, yeah, that's yeah. kind of 3JS. Yeah. So. Okay. I would look at Angular 3, and there's also one for Vue that kind of imitates the same idea as the React one. Very cool. Uh, all right. What's your preferred uh, approach to loading 3D canvases, uh, spinner, placeholder art, etc.? There is actually a spinner thing from React 3J that you can use that actually tells you the percentage of how it's going. So, like, I think my website has that. Um, yeah. So if you if you go to my website, which is weird, weird drop, but if you go to wait, is this domain still active? Yes. If you go to Sarah Sarah no age that fail, you can see that it has a little loading spinner at the midi, at the at the thing at the thing at the you know what I mean. um in the middle, not the middle, the middle of the screen, and that's actually comes from 3JS. So there's a, something called spinner or like loading bar or something that you can use that will check how far away you are in the loading so i would definitely uh, do that have you used um this is uh a question uh trace js instead what is it's like t-r-e-s js and it came from i think it's 3d building as well i, I will follow up on this one i will tag the peoples it's from hosting uh multiple of these conferences that i'm like wait i feel like we've talked about something close to this um, oh, oh the the ray tracer is it a ray tracer thing that makes everything look very very like uh realistic things i'll i'll look it up i'll i'll follow up because i know you okay, got yeah, cool. time too uh resources Talking in my a, that you can recommend for meeting with that 3d meeting with that 3d um uh if you just do this everything makes sense <laughs> uh no i think I, I i i know what that means so basically uh like i said i would just google like the donut tutorial it is a very in-depth tutorial on learning blender uh like my main focus is blender i don't really uh know any of the other softwares i used to do like cinema 4d back when i was a kid it um uh, was definitely a legal copy of cinema 4d uh, so right now I would definitely say the donut tutorial, um, that's the one I would go with. Like, it's very in-depth. It teaches you a lot about Blender. If Blender is not actually something you want to learn and you just want to get 3D stuff on the web, then you can use websites like BlendSwap, which you have to create an account, but they don't spam you. Um, I think they're European, so they have to follow the rules of Europe. I, think I like it. Right. Uh, it's fine. They don't spam you, like, but you do have to create an account. And you can download a bunch of uh, Blender files from there that you can just import into your computer and export. A bunch of them are CC0, which is really nice. Like they're royalty free. And also there's Sketchfab. Sketchfab is a huge community of like 3D artists that just put their stuff on the internet for you to download. 
Most of them have attribution, which is super fair as well. But yeah, those are my main resources in terms of that. Hopefully you get through as many as you, uh, we can. Do you specifically have any courses or to, I was thinking about doing it. Um, so not right now I'll come back to you in like maybe a month and a half or something. So thinking about doing 3d curse for react. Like um, I, basically, I went to go, I would teach the basics of react first because I think a lot of people. That's fair. Oh, yeah. yeah. I fair. went to go follow you on Twitter, like during your talk because I was like, I just yeah. want to, you're That's just like, hey, also just like you make this stuff more interesting too. I'm like, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> where can someone learn 3JS from basic to advanced level? There is a course that's paid by uh, Bruno Simon, um, which is, uh, so give me one second. I need to find it. 3JS Journey. It is incredible. It is, it goes step by step. So he used to be a teacher or he's still a teacher. I'm not sure. So it is very in-depth if you want to learn 3JS, just 3JS. It does have some stuff on 3D as well, like React 3 Fiber. If you want to learn just 3JS, definitely 3JS Journey. It's incredible. There's a Discord community, everything. It is really good. It is paid. So if you don't really have access to like $95, um, YouTube is your best friend. I, sure. Yeah. Uh what is the browser support for these cl this uh, for clients? Like, do clients need an M1 to view this? No, this works on my phone. I mean, I have a Pixel 6, which is not the latest one, but still like a pretty decent phone. Um, so there is something like, for example, again, I'm sorry for the name drop, but if you load up my website, which honestly doesn't have anything except the thing, and you click on any of the models in it, physics happens and stuff falls on the floor. And your computer may start it. So if you have things like physics, that's going to make it harder. If you have really expensive, if you have big textures, one thing that I would always say, always use something on Mac. I use image optim to minify all images that you use as textures. Um, so if you have big textures, if you have a lot of physics happening where bodies collide with each other, and if you have, what I mean is like, let's say you have two mugs and the mugs can collide with each other or the floor and you have 10,000 mugs, then that starts being a problem. And if you have a lot of real-time shadows. So the ones that I was using were generated. They weren't real-time. If you have a lot of real-time shadows, that will become slow. Other than that, not really. No, this will run on pretty much anything. Your mom's Very Acer cool. laptop from 2011 is probably fine. Remember the small laptops? That was a weird time. <laughs> it was a weird time. I, I do remember those. Uh, when using dot glb file does it affect the website's performance if we were able to fetch it from an api will they be able to access the different properties um so does it affect performance it always affects performance it's still a file if the file doesn't have a lot of images it can actually be pretty small so the one that i was using was not using the max um compression uh and it's about 500 kilobytes and, but it does have the texture that in reality, you would not need it. I just needed it, you know, for the showbiz to like remove it and then put something else. And if, if you, if you minify it with something called Draco, which is a really cool name, <laughs> it will become way smaller. And without the texture, this would be like 200 kilobytes. Um, can you fetch it from an API? Yes, you can. You can host it on like Cloudflare and do the fetch from there. In, in, instead and just use use glb or use gltf and just use it like that uh there was a website that i did with the pomodoro's team as well called market so it's market that their name pomodoro's are rs and you can download a bunch of cc0 models there and there's a link to you can just like use our cloud flirt <laughs> to like load Very it into cool. your website so that also works fine awesome and uh do you recommend uh, using 3JS only with vanilla JS? If you're using vanilla JS, yes. Like uh, there are other tools that can do very specific things. So let's say if you want to make a game, then maybe 3JS is not the best option. There are game engines like Phaser and stuff like that. Uh, but if you're using vanilla JS, I have never actually researched other ways of doing a lot of very specific 3D things. Uh, but yes, 3JS for vanilla JS and React Angular 3, React 3 Fiber, and Vue 3 for everything else. That's what I, I would recommend. All right. I think we got two more questions. 
Is it possible to use the animations of the GLPS files exported from Blender to be able to be manipulated or oh. controlled by JS from React? Yes, you can export the animations from Blender to React. To, GL to React. That is not a problem. I just didn't do it in here. Uh, and then you have something, you have animations as well, exporting from the use GLTF. And then you can on a use effect, just call animation that, and then the number of the array that you want to play, that play, and you will just play. You can also export cameras, which I also didn't do. And the cameras can have animation. So if you have something of like a scene of like you going through a house, you do not have to write that in JavaScript. <laughs> you can do that in Blender yeah. and export it. Yeah, right? <laughs> the Z position okay. of this house. That would take forever. Uh, yeah. All right, last question. What is your favorite Final Fantasy? Definitely seven. And it's not uh, a, oh my God, she likes it because she played it back in the day and it looked incredible. No, I played it last year. I cried. I, I haven't gone if back into the Final Fantasies. I've, I've, I'm on Dragon Age, and I'm like, the new Dragon Age is about to come out on Boulder Gate. I'm like, I need to go back and play the Final Fantasies. Just play seven. Like, I played the original PS1 one. Um, yeah. You don't have to do that. You don't have to hate yourself like I do. You can just play the new one. <laughs> um, I think the story's pretty much the same. They just add a bunch of stuff to it, like okay. in the first disc. Uh, but uh, if you know... Do you know the big spoiler of Final Fantasy VII? I'm not going to say it out loud. Yeah, I Do you know it? No, I don't remember it. No, you're going to cry. Okay, that's it's going to gut punch you so hard that you want to finish the level and kill everything. Oh my that gosh. has done this to you. I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna start streaming, playing video games. Um, I'm getting. Uh, I don't know what platforms I'm doing, but I'm so excited. And now if I cry, it'll just be in front of everybody. It's going to be great. That's um, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Sarah, so much for joining us today. We thank you so much for having it. me.